All right, so it's PLS with Algebra Unit 3, Topic 1, Lesson 7, Connecting the Dots. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be learning about correlation coefficients. So this is, uh, we're, once again, we're doing uh, statistics, and we're talking about how we can analyze data. In this case, correlation coefficient tells us how far apart the data is away from the trend line. Starts off with a warm-up, which if I was going to do this warm-up, I'm going to make a trend line, a line that best fits the data. A line, okay, a line of best fit. Um, so in this case, the line of best fit is the, the line that goes through the data, splits the data basically in half, and it shows you basically the trend of the data. Uh, now, it looks like in this case, a y-intercept would be about 102, and it looks like it's going down two for every right five. Sorry, that's not working too well. Down two for every right five would be a slope of negative two over five. Now, I'm going to change that from a fraction into a decimal. Negative two-fifths is the same as negative 0.4. So that I can down here, so I was supposed to use a straight edge, but I'm just going to have to deal with the way it is. And I'm going to estimate that by putting that equation as y equals negative 0.4x plus 102. Now, you were supposed to make a prediction. You're not actually supposed to use the exact same thing, but that's okay. That's what I did with the warm-up because that's the trend that I see when I look at this data. All right, so once again, we want to do a reminder of lesson six. Talking about correlation, this is a positive correlation, this is a negative correlation. Positive meaning it's going up, negative meaning it's going down, and this is no correlation. So uh, anytime it doesn't make sense where one does not affect the other, there's going to be no correlation between the two. Like football players' jerseys. I know in the last lesson we did one where um, the number on their back and the number on their back compared to their age, and we know that the number on their back has nothing to do with their age, so there's going to be no relationship between those two uh, increments. So those two labels, I should say. All right. So now we're going to look at some correlation coefficients. So looking at these examples right here, we've got some answers here. So notice that R is used for correlation coefficient. That is the letter that we use. Kind of like we use M for slope. R is correlation coefficient. Now notice that all of these numbers are typically decimals, but they're all numbers where R is between uh, it's got to be less than or equal to 1, but also greater than or equal to negative 1. So negative 1 is the absolute lowest it could possibly be, and negative 1 is like this, meaning all of the data points in the scatter plot are in a straight line, which rarely ever happens, because usually when you're collecting data in a scatter plot, it's gonna not going to be in a perfect straight line. It's not going to be an exact correlation. It's going to be a kind, you know, either a strong correlation or a weak correlation, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, so negative 1 means in a perfectly straight line. If one of these dots was out of line, it's not negative 1 anymore. It'd be like negative 0.99 something. Um, if it's going straight up in a straight line, then it's positive 1. Now, both of these are equally strong correlations because they are going in a straight line. Now, this one's very strong right here. And I say it's very strong because if I draw a trend line through the middle, notice that all the points are very close to that trend line. So it's going to have a correlation coefficient that's very close to 1 because it's close to being a straight line. So this is a very strong correlation coefficient. And this one and this one down here are a little bit weaker. Uh, the reason why they're weaker is because if I draw a line through here and through here, notice that the dots are a little bit more spread apart. This one's a little bit stronger than this one, and I know that because... 0.75 is closer to 1 than 0.65. Now, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because positive or negative just depends whether or not it's going up or down. And that just depends on what the data is talking about. So whether it's going up or down does not matter when you're talking about weak and strong. That just matters when the correlation coefficient because it tells you the correlations, whether or not one's increasing as the other one's decreasing, which is negative, or if they're both increasing. Increasing and increasing means it's going up. All right, zero obviously means that it has no correlation whatsoever. All right, so this one's a little bit weaker because 0.65 is a little bit closer to zero than it is 0.75. So 0.9 it would be very strong. 0.8 is a little bit weaker. 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, all the way down to zero, which is absolutely no correlation whatsoever. All right, so basically we have the exact same information that I just talked about. I'll let you read that on your own. We've also got some good questions that you could ask yourself. So like, how is the correlation coefficient related to the line of best fit? Well, really the correlation coefficient is how far apart all the data are on average from the line of best fit. And we will do something later on, which is calculating residuals, which is actually finding the distance that each point is away from that line of best fit. 
Uh, I'm not going to read through all these uh, because I realize I'm already at four minutes and I want to get through all the information. Now, how do you find correlation coefficient? Unfortunately, you can't do it by hand. You need to use a graphing calculator. This is why you're supposed to buy a graphing calculator, not just a regular calculator. So the way you do it is, first of all, you need to turn diagnostics on. And the way you do that is by pressing second catalog. And catalog, I believe, is on the zero. So really, this is second zero. Notice the word yellow is above it. I'm sorry, notice that above the zero in yellow, it should say catalog. And then you're going to get a huge list of like 100 things. You scroll down to like the 30th one, which is diagnostics on. You can see it right here. So put your little cursor right here, press enter, enter, and it should say done on your screen. And now what you notice is when you press stat calculate four, like you used to do to find this, you used to do this to find the line of regression, which would be the line that goes through the data. And what you're going to notice is that this part is now added now that you've turned diagnostics on. And you don't have to do diagnostics on every single time. Once you've done it once, that's it. That's all you got to do as long as you don't reset the calculator. So now R represents right there correlation coefficient. So that means whatever data was put in this calculator was pretty strong because 0 0.90 means most of the data was very close to the trend line, which is this equation right here. Y equals A. Uh, plus BX. Uh, A plus BX. Usually it's AX plus B. That's weird. Um, so I'm going to keep it the way it is because that's not usually the way my calculators work. So A plus BX. So that would be A 5.4. I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. Um, plus 0.496X. Now it's important you don't want to round your slope too, too much. Uh, I do realize that the one is probably not very significant, so I can drop it off everything over here. All right, uh, let's get to the actual lesson itself. So in this lesson, uh, you probably have sets of data, so set A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth. So what you want to do is you want to graph those points. And once you graph them, it's going to look like this. And this is how I set it up, making each box worth 0.2. So every five boxes was one hole. So write 2, 1, so that's 2, 1 right here. Now what you want to do if you have a graphic calculator is you want to press Stat, Edit, and then once you press enter on edit, you're going to see line one and line two. Put the X's in line one, put the Y's in line two. Make sure that you put them in correctly, you put them in the correct order, because if anything's messed up, it's going to mess up everything. And you got to make sure that you end with the same amount of numbers in line one and line two, because if you end up with different amounts of data, you're going to get a mismatch error when you try to do anything. And if you have these numbers like reverse, then you're going to get completely wrong information. So you put this in for line one in your calculator, this in for line two, and then you go to stat calculate four. And once you do stat calculate four, it's going to tell you that the correlation coefficient is 0.49, which seems to make sense because in this case, this data is pretty spread out. I would not call this data very strong. I'd say it's more of a weak correlation. All right, same thing for this one. So you put the data in. This one looks a little bit stronger. So I'm going to say the trend line is going to be around there. And the correlation coefficient is going to be 0.93. As a matter of fact, that's pretty darn strong. 0.94 is very close to 1. Now, keep in mind that, remember, this is positive because it's increasing. Set C. So this is what set C looks like. This looks even stronger. And I did a poor job making my trend line there. But this one looks even stronger than the last one, which is 0.93. So if I had to make a guess, I'd say it's going to be like 0.96. Oh, negative. I forgot. I forgot the fact that the data is going down, it's going to be negative. So I meant to predict negative 0.96, which was pretty darn, pretty close. All right, set D looks like this. This looks pretty weak. This is also negative. I'm not going to make that mistake twice. Uh, I'm going to guess about negative 0.3. Oh, it's way higher than I was expecting. Okay, so it's a much closer correlation. Now, remember, like I said before, um, it's not an exact science. You can't do this by hand. Yes, you can figure out residuals, which we'll do later on. The distance each point is away, and you probably notice what I'm doing here. I'm trying to connect all the points to the trend line. All right, that's, that's for another day. That's residuals. All right, set E. I like making predictions here. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out if this is positive or negative. I got a feeling that it's probably going to be positive. This is pretty darn close to zero, though. This is going to be really, really weak. So I'm going to say positive 0.1. Oh, pretty close. Positive 0 0.07. Yeah, that was very close, as a matter of fact. Much better. That kind of makes up for the last one that I pred predicted pretty poorly. Um, set F. Okay, this one's going to be really easy. It's going to be positive, and it looks like it's going to be 1 exactly. And it sure is, because all the data is exactly in a line. Set G. Looks like, once again, all the data is in a direct line, and I'm going to guess, I know it's not really much of a guess, but it's going to be, R is going to be negative 1, because it's going down and it's in a straight line. 
Okay, so then what you can do is you can guess. So if you can do what I was just doing for the last one, you can guess on all these. Uh, just stop the video, make your guesses, and then watch as I reveal them. Here I go. And then you get to have the same fun I just did. All right. Actually, they might be the same ones, aren't they? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, just pretend like you didn't see the other ones then. All right, looks like the homework is going to be very easy. And this is what I would expect to see on any test, where you're given some examples of correlation coefficients, and you're just being asked to match them. That's it. Well, first of all, these two are positive and these two are negative. That's going to narrow this down pretty much. This is definitely a negative correlation. That's a bad line, but just so be it. This one looks like positive, but a really, 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 really weak. This one's definitely positive, but a little bit stronger. And this one looks pretty darn weak, but it's going down. So with that information alone, this is going to be a very simple homework assignment. Uh, I'm not going to put the answers up here because I know I want you to watch the video. But I'm going to tell you the answers right now. This one's going down, and it's very strong. So there's only C and D are the only two choices of going down, and C is the stronger one. So this one definitely looks like C. Uh, this one's also going down, but it's not as strong, so I'm going to say that's D, definitely. This one's really weak. In fact, in fact it's 0.05. It's very close to zero, matter of fact. Um, this data is really all scattered all over the place, so that one's definitely A. And this one's much, 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 much stronger. You know, I wouldn't have predicted 0.97. I would have predicted more like 0.9 or 0.8 something, but that's what it says, so that's definitely B. It's not a matter about coming up with the exact answer. It's about can you match the one that makes the most logical sense. All right, thanks again for watching. Please give it a like to help you learn something about correlation coefficients, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Tell your friends. All right, have a great day.